Welcome to Walking in the Word, the biblical teaching arm of the Women World Leaders podcast. I'm your host, Julie Jenkins, and I'm pleased that you have joined us for this series as we look at the life of Jesus chronologically by studying all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Before we get started, I want to welcome you to Women World Leaders if you're new, and I want to share with you that what you are listening to is just the tip of the iceberg. On this podcast alone, you can hear Empowering Lives with Purpose on Mondays. It's a one-on-one interview hosted by Kimberly Hobbs with a different woman of faith each week. And on Fridays, we invite you to take a journey to joy with Carrie Christopher as she shares poems and words of encouragement to propel you into the weekend. Visit our website at womenworldleaders.com to read our daily devotion, to sign up to receive our free magazine, Voice of Truth, to participate in our prayer wall, or to purchase one of our best-selling books. Speaking of books, if God is whispering in your ear to tell your God story, we invite you to join our team of authors preparing to embark on our next book, Victories, Claiming Freedom in Christ. If you're interested in getting more details about being an author in this book, please contact us through our website. Let's begin in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you in advance for what you have for us today from your word. God, we know that when we come to the Bible, you meet us where we are by the power of your Holy Spirit. As we embark on our walk today, I ask that you infiltrate my words with your thoughts. I pray that you keep me on track, being faithful and true to your word. And at the same time, I pray that you open wide each of our hearts as you pour in your teaching and your blessings as we listen and put into practice whatever it is that you have for us today. God, we give you these minutes ahead. Please mold us however you would like for your glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, this is getting exciting. As we continue down this path of knowing Jesus more, we have come to an important mile marker, Jesus' ministry in his adult years. Now, we aren't there quite yet. That will be next week. But today we focus on John the Baptist, who was sent to prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. This is the first podcast where we are combining teaching from all four Gospels. (laughs) That alone should tell us how important this milestone is. And it is the first time we are reading from the book of Mark. The Gospel of Mark was written by John Mark, who was not one of the 12 disciples, but who accompanied Paul on his first missionary journey and probably knew Jesus personally. The hallmark of Mark's gospel is that it is fast moving, systematically written, and focuses on the teaching and miracles of Jesus, showcasing that Jesus is the one true God, which was an important thing for Mark's original reader to understand as his target audience was the Roman citizen who lived in a culture chock full of various gods. Let's read Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 8 in the New Living Translation to set the scene for today's teaching. This is the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had written, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. This messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and preached that people should be baptized to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. All of Judea, including all the people of Jerusalem, 
went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. His clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food, he ate locusts and wild honey. John announced, Someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. God had prepared John the Baptist for this moment for 30 years. Scripture doesn't tell us much about those years of preparation, though Luke tells us that John had been living in the wilderness when a message from God came to him. And we know that it was the most important message to be spoken in 400 years. John the messenger had been prophesied about back in the book of Isaiah. All four Gospels cite that John the Baptist claimed himself as the messenger to the Messiah, the the voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Luke elaborates, saying, The valleys will be filled and the mountains and the hills made level. The curves will be straightened and the rough places made smooth. And then all people will see the salvation sent from God. These words are pulled out of what we know as Isaiah 40 and is a prophecy that the Jewish people would have known by heart. The snippets of this prophecy given in each of the Gospels would have spurred the Jew on to reciting the whole prophecy in his or her head. Much like you and I can't begin singing the ABC song and stop at the letter J. Your mind just wants to complete what you know. But Luke, remember, was a Gentile Christian, so he elaborated, making sure that the reader knew that this Messiah, whom John the Baptist was preparing the world for, was coming for the salvation of all people, Jews and Gentiles alike. Now, John was an unlikely messenger. He was in no way part of the elite crowd, and yet people were drawn to him. He had a calling on his life. Remember, he received the Holy Spirit when he was yet in his mother's womb, and he recognized the Son of God while he was still in Mary's womb. It was clear from the beginning that John was called. And when we are committed to God's authentic call on our lives, God's plans will succeed. It doesn't matter if we look the part or how we are positioned socially. God will place us perfectly. John, with his clothes woven from coarse camel hair and a leather belt, stood in stark contrast to the religious elite of the day with their long flowing robes. But not only did John not look like the established teachers of the day, he didn't sound like them either. John told the hard truth that God was looking for more than rule followers and those that had the right ancestral lines. He was looking for their hearts to be set right. Some listened. Luke records that some asked pointed questions, as beginning in chapter 3, verse 18. The crowds asked, what should we do? John replied, if you have two shirts, give one to the poor. If you have food, share it with those who are hungry. Even corrupt tax collectors came to be baptized and asked, Teacher, what should we do? He replied, Collect no more taxes than the government requires. What should we do? asked some soldiers. John replied, Don't extort money or make false accusations, and be content with your pay. Some people, as we will find out, did not appreciate these guidelines, but others recognized that John's words were words they needed to hear. When God gives you something to say, not everyone will appreciate it or even like it. But as Christians, our goal is to follow God's will for us. It sounds pretty simple, and at this point, John the Baptist makes it look simple. We will find out later that he struggled too. But for now, we hear John's warning loud and clear. Repent, 
turn to God, be baptized, because the kingdom of heaven is near. John's call to the people to be baptized was not a new concept, as it was customary at the time to baptize non-Jews who were converting to Judaism. But John the Baptist was saying that even the Jewish people should be baptized as an outward sign of repentance from sin. This was unusual. John was calling them to turn their hearts to God, to make a personal and public symbolic action signifying their repentance and the washing away of sins. It was in this same Jordan River where the Israelites had years before renewed their covenant with God before entering the promised land after wandering in the desert. And now God was calling individuals to renew their commitment to God again, to change their hearts and their lives, preparing themselves for the arrival of the promised Savior there in the Jordan River. But not all was well. Some of John's conversations were with people who didn't accept his message at all, including the religious elite. The Gospel of John tells us about his interaction with the priests and the Levites, recording that John the Baptist simply and directly answered their questions. Beginning in John chapter 1, verse 19. This was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders sent priests and temple assistants from Jerusalem to ask John, Who are you? He came right out and said, I am not the Messiah. Well, then, who are you? They asked. Are you Elijah? No, he replied. Are you the prophet we are expecting? No. Then who are you? We need an answer for those who sent us. What do you have to say about yourself? John replied in the words of the prophet Isaiah, I am a voice shouting in the wilderness, clear the way for the Lord's coming. Matthew recorded in chapter 3, verses 7 through 10, that John boldly called out the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to watch him baptized, he denounced them. You brood of snakes, he exclaimed, who warned you to flee the coming wrath? Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we're safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing. For I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. Even now, the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. John was not about to give false honor to these men. Instead, he told them that they had the same responsibility as everyone else to repent and be baptized, that neither neither their heritage nor their position was deemed worthy in God's eyes, although that is exactly what they had come to count on. Finally, and most importantly, John gave a teaser of the Messiah to come. In this age of television, we all understand the power of a good cliffhanger. Let's read in Luke. Everyone was expecting the Messiah to come soon, and they were eager to know whether John might be the Messiah. John answered their questions by saying, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming soon who is greater than I am so much greater that I'm not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. This must have been like hearing a foreign language. (laughs) What did John mean by a baptism by fire? We now know that this was a prophecy of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came in tongues of fire as described in Acts 2. We also know that it is only by an infusion of the Holy Spirit that we can truly become who God has made us to be. This is God's gift to us. John could guide the people to prepare for Jesus' coming, but each person had to encounter Jesus directly to understand the meaning of the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's the same today. 
We each must make our own decision to repent, to turn away from our sin, and to turn to Jesus. It doesn't matter if your grandmother was the most faithful Christian who prayed for you every morning. It doesn't matter if you attend the most charismatic church. And it doesn't matter if you try to be a good person. Only a personal encounter with the one true Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ himself can save you from eternal death. No genealogy, social standing, expensive clothing, or good deed can save us from the daily sin in our lives. Only Jesus and the Holy Spirit can do that. Dear Jesus, you are our Messiah, the one true Lord of our lives. God, we give you our lives today. We turn from our sin. Please forgive us for our selfishness, our greed, our pride, even our lack of faith. God, we lean fully on you. We trust you. We love you. Thank you for sending us each our own John the Baptist, that person who prepared us for your arrival into our hearts. And God, give us courage to be that messenger to others, to speak boldly, to help prepare those whom you have put in our paths, that they may be ready to receive you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks for listening to Women World Leaders Podcast. Join us each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as we explore together God's extravagant love and your courageous purpose. Visit our website at www.womenworldleaders.com to submit a prayer request, register for an upcoming event, and support the ministry. From his heart to yours, we are Women World Leaders. All content is copyrighted by Women World Leaders and cannot be used without express written consent.